In 30 days, a massive asteroid is set to collide with Earth, predicted to wipe out all of humanity. With hundreds of players knowing the world is on the brink of extinction, will they come together and attempt to survive? Or will some break off from society to permanently kill others believing there are no consequences to their actions? In the midst of this world ending news, I began my first day in an isolated region off the coast of eastern Russia. My main goal was to survive, eventually to build bunkers, civilizations, and whatever else was necessary to keep the economy and humanity afloat. But first, I needed to get diamond armor and tools as fast as possible before anyone found my location. And while I seemed to have time and peace for now, in other parts of the world, things were already falling apart. <laughs> Knowing the world was going to end, many people started to commit horrible acts such as stealing, griefing, and killing. Some making it a competition to see how many players they could take out before doomsday. Back at my chill home base, I spent the rest of day one staying out of sight to grinding underground. And on day two, I got enough diamond armor and tools to confidently venture out to explore the surface. We're gonna have to say goodbye to our little camp. That nice knowing it. Hey, maybe we'll come back. And as scripted as this seems, in the corner of my eye, I spotted something. There is a dude up there watching me right now. Oh God, bro. Just as I was about to leave, two decently geared people had found my location and I had no idea if they were dangerous or not. Bro, I didn't think anybody would find me out here. Oh god, he's approaching. Yo, man. Nice little farm you got here. That's not mine. Outnumbered, my two options were either boat away into the wide open where I'd probably be found by somebody else or turn from prey to predator. Possibly killing two innocent people. Yo, bro, bro. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, come whoa, here. Whoa, 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 come whoa, here. Whoa, you whoa, right whoa, here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I gotta build. I gotta build. I gotta build. Fight back. Stop. What are you doing? Wait. Hey. We don't want to hurt you, man. What's your end goal? in life uh survive not be killed by a random bozo in full diamond you calling me a bozo honestly these guys spay and mindless seemed all right knowing strength in numbers i tagged along back to their base which unbeknownst to me was just 200 blocks away and they even had one more group member who i thought i'd never see again oh McYum? Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Are you drinking again? I'm doing the mathematics on this wall. You see the, the mathematics on the wall. I was just digging and uh, seeing if I could find Jesus. That is McYum, one of my closest friends who I've been hoping to find ever since day one. And although he currently wasn't reacting well to the end of the world, I knew him, Mindless Spay, and I could come together to survive. While we planned on bringing each other up, envisioning on what we could achieve, groups across the world were forming with murder on their minds. No! Small factions and bases had started forming, which were doing barbaric things, such as baiting poor and desperate people with food and then killing them on the spot. Most of the anarchy was happening in different places, like at 00, Zero the United States, in Australia. But so far, most of them were just disorganized packs of wolves trying to gain some power. The criminal groups and factions weren't the only ones expanding though, because our survivor network was getting geared and girthy. We picked up some genius members like Fast Jazz, A1306, and more, so I decided to call a team meeting on day five to conduct business in a complete plan. Hey, 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 hey. Settle down, settle down, McYum. You've had, you've had a couple too many. After hours of scheming, we decided to name our group The Grinders. Our big plans were to get as geared as possible, construct farms, and build the most insane doomsday bunker possible to increase our chances of surviving the meteor. While the crew was getting hyped about our future, I noticed a few strange zombies walking into the woods. Where are those zombies going to over there? By the way. Guys, you've all inspired me to change. I want to stop drinking, guys. And I want to stop the media. The only person I could ever truly trust in this world had just been killed right in front of me by an upcoming criminal faction known as the Legion, led by Murphy. And after traveling the world, hunting down any players they could assert dominance upon, they had just stumbled across us. Oh, hell no. Who is this? Who is this dude? Being completely unprepared for a fight, two of the grinders had ended up being killed, which made this look even worse for us. Bruh, why do you do that? <laughs> I don't need no reason. What do you mean you don't need no reason, bruh? You're a clown! You're a clown! Knowing we could not go down like this, Mindless Spay and I looked into each other's eyes from across the war zone, which brought out all of our remaining strength. Yeah. What the hell was that? It was so noisy making, bruh! Hey, 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 hey,
Get them, boys! We gotta get out of here, dude. I'm getting low. I'm getting low. After managing to hold our ground, they decided to run. I wanted to chase them and kill them right on the spot, but I knew I needed to control my emotions before someone else died. The Legion may have won this battle, but the war was only just beginning. The next day, Spay, Mindless, and I were still feeling Mikiam's passing, and now knowing in an ending world where you're never truly safe, we needed to complete our survival goals instead of wallowing around like losers. We needed to stay hard and start freaking grinding. The first step was to get the most powerful gear and loot we could, so we started off by making a temporary secret base underground where Fast Jazz had designed this villager manufacturing facility. From breeding a constant flow of villagers into these chambers and exploiting the light levels around berry bushes to keep them in place, we only got the best trade. Using our now unlimited gear, Spay used his redstone talent to TNT dupe out an entire slime chunk, which we then cleaned up, layered with slabs, automated, and watched the profits roll in. We also created many other builds, like an extremely efficient iron farm, a drowned farm to get tridents, and this decoy castle that Spay is still building. Now with steady progress being made, it was time to figure out how others were reacting in the world, as well as where Murfin and the Legion were, before they decided to attack us again. With my gear, I confidently ventured out into the world, looking for anyone who might have info on their location. Oh my gosh. Okay, that guy is a little bit stacked. Look at this dude, bro. It's a spider. You can fight it. Oh, he's coming over to me. <laughs> do you know anything about Murfin? I don't think I do. Damn. Damn. No luck, but I wasn't gonna stop there. Would you know anyone by the name of Murfin? No. <laughs> no. No, I don't. While most people I talked to were just simply trying to survive, some seem to have gone completely insane. Why are you guys just out here naked like this? So, I've got a little proposition for you, okay? See that meteor up there in the sky? That was sent by this dude named Gus. He's an all-powerful being. I have been appointed as his messenger, right? And I'm starting a group to worship him. He is sending bad things upon this earth. What I'm doing now is I am trying to stop it. That might be the worst pitch I've ever heard. And you guys are on board with this? You have fun with that. Do any of you know anything about a guy named Murfin? Uh, no. Oh my gosh, bro. Maybe it was the fear of the Legion finding out, or they just didn't know. Nobody had any info. But just as I returned to our base in Russia, a mysterious man suddenly showed up next to our slime farm. Hey, relax. Hello there. Well, how do you even find- Bro, how do people keep finding us? I have some info for you. Weren't you looking for Murfin? Yeah. I have um, a little book, and in his book is the location of Murfin's base, for a little payment, of course. As much as I hated this guy, I respected the hustle. So out of desperation, I gave him what he was looking for, and we made the trade. I right, slowly... <laughs> The southern coast of Hawaii. I needed to call a meeting with Spay and Mindless right freaking now. All right, let's go in the castle, boys. Oh, you want to check out my crazy interior? Spy, you know what? I'm just going to handle the interior design, all right? Nope, I don't know about that one. Ah, what the nah. fuck? Let's stop bickering and take a seat at the fire real quick. We have the location of Murfin's base. Oh. Look it, there's an empty seat across from us. McYum should be there. I say we raid them. If we sit here and wait like we have before, they're just going to show up again and ruin us again. Rob us of what's, another member. What's this voice you're putting on? I'm not putting on any voice, dude. <laughs> you are. You're trying to make your voice sound deeper. <laughs> but seriously, boys. We don't have much time left. We need to finish our bunker first. And then, and then they're coming. We're coming for them, boys. So with that being said, who is ready to get grinding? The idea was to save our precious time by clearing an area out for the bunker with a TNT world eater rather than by hand, then freely building inside, and finally covering the top up with a natural looking roof. The only way we're going to survive right now is if we were self-disciplined. So on day seven, we immediately got to grinding the perimeter out. The first step was to TNT dupe out an outline of where the hole in world eater would go, which we would then clear and clean up anything inside like liquids. Next, by using the slime, redstone, and other resources that had been farmed, we constructed a gigantic world eater that consisted of sophisticated TNT bomber planes that'll go down automatically once activated, and sweepers, which are designed to remove liquids that could break the machine while clearing out blocks. Let's get it! That's, uh, terrifying. Yeah. La, 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 let's go, L water, L water. This water so dog water. <laughs> <laughs> I really said this dogger, dog foggers. What the fuck, Sip? After about a day of running, the perimeter had been completed. And while the rest of the grinders and I continued working on the bunker and concealing the masterpiece, other players across the world were making their own survival plans as well. From beautiful different bunkers, players creating arsenals of farms, as well as some dude who placed down hundreds of beds in hope of deflecting the meteor, it was clear most people were trying to survive the asteroid and other evil players 
like Murfin. Speaking of that scumbag, Murfin has been continuing to recruit Legion members to become stronger and more powerful, which is a bit worrisome for our revenge plan. Surprisingly though, the Gus Colts has been passively gaining loads of followers and even building their own Gus themed civilization in the UK. Back at the HQ, me, Pingu, and Fast Jazz had made some great progress on covering up the bunker. By using redstone and an automatic stone generator, this machine progressively covers up the perimeter's entire roof, which after, we can cover all the stone and moss to make it look like grass. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I would be a little bit Bruh. suspicious if I came across this. So what I think we should do is get some sapling and just kind of go ahead and start planting trees because... Guys, last time I checked, I don't think there was an update. Uh, <laughs> the super flat azalea flower forest biome. After a few hours of mining and planting trees, what used to be a gigantic hole turned into a perfectly fresh plot of land. And now, to finish the entire project off, the underground doomsday bunker. It's beautiful. It's about time. After countless sleepless nights, I finally perfected my arches, my grayscale, and the shading. It's Bro. perfect. Barry, shut up. Like, actually, what was that? You. <laughs> Over the past few days, the entire crew had been grinding to finish this bunker. With the World War II theme, plenty of necessities inside to survive, and even a potion vending machine that uses creepers and tipped arrows, this thing was an absolute fortress. Let's go, mindless. Get in here. I am here. Bruh. Finally, we finished the bunker. We have our top side. We're safe for once, but I still need you all to stay harder than ever because when we go into this battle, it's either us or them. With Mindless, Cage, Pingu, and Fast Jazz, we set out to Hawaii, while a few members like Space stayed at base since he's a builder and not a PvPer. Once we arrived in California, we set up Ender Pearl Stasis Chambers in case things decided to go south, and then we started the swim to locate their base. Oh, okay, that's it. That's the volcano. That's Hawaii. Okay. Alright, come this way. It's the south side. Oh! That's gotta be it. Right next to Hawaii's gigantic volcano was indeed the Legion's base, which seemed to have a tunnel going down into some bunker beneath. So we pursued it quietly. If there was any time for the grinders to stay hard, it was now. It was at this time I was getting a bad feeling about all of this and the guy who gave us the location, but there was no going back now. Worst base I've ever seen. Alright, where are they at? What the hell? We got set up. The entire time, Murphin knew we were coming and had all the time in the world to prepare. Ah! Ah, Murphin! Ah! Murphin! Get in the water, boy! Luckily, our Riptide Tridents gave us a huge advantage in combat, but what was about to happen would make this situation a whole lot worse. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Wait, why is the meteor hitting the ocean? For a second, the fighting stopped to look at the meteor fragment, but unbeknownst to us, the impact caused a lot of seismic activity. Oh my gosh. What? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Guys, get inside, get inside, get inside, get inside. Oh! 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 With their fake base now consumed in lava, it was just us, them, in the constant fear of being burnt alive. Oh, the, oh my god. Get, get underwater. Get underwater. Get oh underwater. my get underwater. gosh. They're all here. Mindless. Bro, oh, it's dude. right there. Stop. Guys, just get out of here. Get in this boat. Get in this boat. No. Murphin and his crew went to flee on boat, so me and the boys chased them, knowing they were weak. I for an eye. Bye bye, eye boy. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Actually go. Actually go. Get Just get on top of the hill. Get on top of the hill. Yo, you are not gonna die after all of that to this. The lava cut us off right before we could close in on them, forcing Mindless and I to exit the scene, hoping the lava wouldn't catch up to us like it was to hundreds across the world. Innocent players, bases, farms, and even supposedly safe bunkers had all been consumed by the volcanic eruption, leaving anyone who survived to flee the Americas. Wait, 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 stop moving, stop moving. Hold on, let's keep on their tail. Let's try to find their real base. Our escape paths ended up crossing over with Murfins, and to figure out where their real base was, Mindless and I tailed them for thousands of blocks, making sure to keep a distance. Oh, oh. They're going down, they're going down into the water. Now knowing Murfin and the Legion's true base of operations in the Mozambique Channel, we snuck back to the bunker to regroup, knowing we had the one up now. This was our game to win. As the volcano's lava came to a halt midway through the entire world after destroying bases, killing players in their dreams of survival, but weirdly stopping right before the Gus Colt civilization, it was clear that this was only the start, and the meteor had much more in store for us. That was episode 1 out of 3, and the second episode is gonna drop at exactly 5 p.m. Eastern EST on December 6th. I also put my heart into this video, so please subscribe. Also, follow my Twitter and Instagram. I'm posting updates and teasers on there.